Our previous example showed that if G is an ambiguous regular grammar, we can write it as an NFA lambda, convert it into a finite automaton, and to use the finite automaton to rewrite G as an unambiguous grammar, G prime. This worked because the rules of a regular grammar could be converted into the transition rule delta for an NFA lambda. But what if we don't have a regular grammar? To convert an ambiguous grammar that isn't regular into an unambiguous grammar is a research project. In other words, the only way we can solve this is through insight and creativity, and those can't be taught, those can only be learned. For example, suppose we have a grammar with these terminals and this production rule, and let's see if we can rewrite it as a non-ambiguous grammar. This grammar is ambiguous because there are two ways we might derive an expression like a minus a minus a. For example, s might produce s minus s, and this verse s could be replaced with an a, and the second could be replaced with s minus s. And so if we evaluate, we'll replace all our terminals, we'll evaluate a minus a, that's going to be 0, and then s, our original start symbol, will be a. But there's another possible leftmost derivation s could produce s minus s, and s could produce s minus s, and again, all our terminals become a, but this time, when we work our way backwards, then we get negative a for s. And so we can express these two derivations as a minus parentheses a minus a, which gives us a, and a minus a minus a equals minus a. Now, for our original expression, the second derivation is the correct one based on the standard rules of arithmetic. So let's see if we can rewrite our grammar so that only the second derivation is possible. Again, this takes creativity and insight, and no one can teach you those things. But there are some strategies that will make it easier to be creative and insightful, and one thing we could do is to ask how it happened. So how is it that we were able to get two different derivations? We obtained two different leftmost derivations because the rule s produces s minus s allowed for any grouping of the symbols. But notice in the grouping that gave us the correct derivation, the first step s produces s minus s made the second s a terminal symbol. Now, since our original production rule s produces s minus s does not distinguish between the two terms, we'll introduce a new non-terminal t and rewrite our rule as s produces s minus t. And since t has to be a single symbol, then we also need the rule t produces a. And so we'll introduce a new non-terminal symbol t and rewrite our grammar rules. It might not be obvious why this avoids ambiguity. If the problem in s produces s minus s is that we could use any grouping for s, why has s produces s minus t avoided this? For that, it's helpful to remember an algorithm has decisions, but no choices. Suppose in a minus a minus a we tried to split this as s minus t. The next step in our derivation tree would be s produces a, but the only possible next step after that would be t produces a, which won't give us the expression we want. Consequently, we can't make this particular split. We'll ignore the question of how to find the correct split for now. Let's check this on a minus a minus a minus a. So s produces s minus t, which will eventually become a terminal symbol. The leftmost s produces s minus t, and again the leftmost s produces s minus t, and s produces a, and all of the t's can only produce a. So working our way backwards, we'll fill in all of our terminals with a's, and we'll evaluate 
a minus a, that's 0. Minus a is negative a. Minus a again is negative 2a. And note that under the regular rules of arithmetic, our derivation should give us negative 2a. So this gives us the correct derivation of an arithmetic with one operation. What if we had a second operation? Or include all four basic arithmetic operations? We'll take a look at that next.